Okay, go ahead. Good morning. Thanks for meeting with us. Could you just introduce yourself and tell us um, about the operation? Good morning. Um, my name is Wayne Gardner. I am the owner of this operation, Lincoln Farms. And what we do, what we have here is an aquaponics facility. Uh, aquaponics basically is the integration of hydroponics, which is growing plants or vegetables in a soilless culture using water as a medium, and aquaculture, which is raising fishes. So once you bring them both together in, in an integrated system, it's, it's called um, aquaponics. So that's what we do basically. All right. How long have you, um, how long have you started this? Um, about seven years, but we've been open to the public for about six years. Okay. All right. What are some of the constraints you have um, encountered in um, <laughs> One of the, the, the largest challenges, even now, is, is water. The water quality is very important, significant. It's a significant factor when you're doing hydroponics or aquaponics, even aquaculture. And I mean, when I started, I tried using tap water for a while. It worked for a while, but then the water quality became so bad that I actually had to bring an arrow plant in, a reverse osmosis plant in, to treat the tap water before I can add it to my system. You know, that's one of the major constraints. Another electri electricity cost, uh, it's, it's, it can be really high. And with this, our system has to run 24-7. You know, you, you, you're better off not turning anything off, just leaving everything to maintain optimal conditions all the time. You know, so those are the two major ones that I would mention. Okay. Um, so you, you have to daily check the pH um, of the water or the sea or whatever, daily um, or weekly. How often do you check well, the quality um, of the water? When I started, I used to do that, but I have monitors now. Okay. on my system that that controls my that well not control but checks my EC uh, my electroconduct the electroconductivity on the water right. that gives me an idea of how much ions the total amount of ions that are dissolved in the water and also the pH so I have monitors and they have parameters set on them so once they go out of range they'll alert me okay so I don't have to look at them all the time what prompted you in um, agroponics um, okay, my father used to be a fisherman, Ooh. and uh, after he got to a certain age and we didn't like the fact that he was going on the seas to fish, you know, he, not wanting to keep still, you know, how the older folks are, he got this piece of land and started in um, agriculture, and after he died, he died in 2004, mm -hmm. you know, my mom had workers working, but I found that, you know, it wasn't as profitable as she wanted it to be. So I just came up with the idea of merging both um, work that my father did, fishing and agriculture, and uh, that's how we came up with this. That's why we call it Lincoln Farms. That was my father's name. I was about to ask you why Lincoln? Why yes, the name that, Lincoln? That, that's, so that's, no, that's, that was my father's name. That explains it. Yes. Okay. So, so this um, is a memorial to him. Oh, that's good. That's very good. And I'm sure he's happy to know that you continue the work. In a different fashion or form, but you still continue and you combine it. Um, so explain to us about your tanks and then we're going to do a little walkthrough. You can show us like what vegetation you have. Um, I noticed on the way in you have different types of lettuce. Yes. I don't know if you, beside lettuce, you're growing anything else or is that um, at the moment? We, uh, lettuce is our major crop, mm -hmm. but we do some small amounts of herbs. We do basil. We do mint. Um, we just started planting some parsley, so those are coming quite Any nicely. Any new bars, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just started, I used to do arugula before. Okay. I just started planting a little bit for uh -huh. some customers that has been asking for it. Um, that have been asking for it. Um, also, I've done kale before. I've done tomatoes before. Sweet peppers, I mean celery. All these are trials that we've done. Um, a lot of them we decided not to continue simply because of what's been offered in the market for them. Mm. You know, it, it's not profitable for us to do it. So we have to work with what keeps the bills paid. Yeah, <laughs> and then so you have you have more farmers growing other crops. And similar yes. yeah. 
Okay, so you can explain to us about this tank, and then I see you have another set over here, so you can explain to us okay, about well, them. Okay, what it is basically, we have a recirculating system, mm -hmm. um, so we don't dump any water, there's no waste product that's, give, that's so you know, emitted use. into the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, it just keeps recirculating and it goes through filters that purify the water. So we raise the fishes here in this tank and our tanks are 6,000 gallons capacity each mm -hmm. and we try to do half pound of fish to a gallon of water but sometimes we go a little bit over so normally we'd raise between 3,000 and 4,000 pounds of fishes per tank. Oh. Right? Um, and the average, the average weight Okay, well, it depends on the, the customer really because some people like the fishes really big and some people want a plate sized fish. Most housewives they, they want to put a whole fish in a, in, a, in a person's plate, they don't want to be um, cutting the fishes, you know, and shearing them. So the housewives would like a fish that is going to be between half pound and three quarters of a pound. Right. And then you have some guys that will come and they will say, No, I want big fish, and if you can give them a two pound fish, they're happy. A three pound fish, they're happy. But what's so, the largest size you ever? Um, I've gotten maybe four and a half pounds before. Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest we've ever, we've ever gotten. Okay. You know, so, so, so you raise them over here. Yes. And then um, they're transferred. Well, okay. The the process actually begins in our nursery. So we have boot stock, which are breeder fishes that we import, mm -hmm. and we use these to keep our farm. Um, so we don't really do we do not really do the inbreeding. So we try to keep the bloodline as pure. That way we get you know good optimum growth and all that for the fishes. So they grow quite quickly. Unlike chicken farming, we don't manipulate growth through feed. We manipulate growth through conditions. Because if your water quality is good and the water is clean and all that, the, the fishes will breed better than better the fishes breed. It helps them to digest the food faster and so you can feed more often. So we feed on average about 3% of the fish's body weight per day. Right? That's that's the that's the, the, the most you can feed the fishes for beneficial feeding for beneficial food. Really? Beyond that you're just gonna be wasting your feed. So um, we feed three times a day in the morning, about lunchtime and in the evening before we leave. So we feed about one percent of the body weight. You know, each, it's, it's each not like a fish hotel. <laughs> well, it's a hotel until it's harvest time. <laughs> time, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> right. So, um, once we we have the brood stock, you know, they would spawn in the tank. The the tilapias are mouth brooders, and so once she lays the eggs, the males will fertilize the eggs with his sperm, and then the females pick them up in their mouth, and they just keep them tumbling. Sometimes you have one female maybe giving you eight hundred to twelve hundred eggs. Yeah, that they do that amount. Oh. But once they have the eggs in their mouth fertilized, we catch the females and we take the eggs from them. And we put them in what you call a hatching jar that simulates the mother's mouth. Mm. And so the, in the hatching jar, the eggs just tumble gently. If they lay still, they will die. So we just keep them tumbling and then after a few days they hatch. And after they hatch, for the first 10 days, there's a yolk sac. They feed on the yolk sac. And then after the yolk sac comes off, they are a lot lighter so they can swim to the surface and that way they can swim out of the hatching jar into a large container. Mm -hmm. And we keep them there um, by themselves, you know, until they're probably an inch, two inches. When they get to about, I would say we, we, we bring them in an outside tank at that size. Mm -hmm. And then once they get to about two, three inches, we bring them into these larger tanks. Because the drains in these tanks, they would need to be that size so they do not pass through the drain right, and go right. where we don't want it to go. Right, right. right, so once they get to that size, we bring them here and we keep them here until it's harvest time. Mm -hmm. And then once it's harvest time, we take them from this freshwater tank and we bring them into these tanks here where we have brackish water for purge process. That process takes all the earthy flavor away from the fish. And uh, as I was saying to you, it acts as a brine also for salt water, so it tightens the flesh so that it's not as soft, as fast as tilapia would normally be. So I, I, would, I would happily tell you that our fish, would, you would not know that you're eating tilapia if you're eating fish from us because it has a fresh taste. I have restaurants that I sell fish to, and you would know that you're eating tilapia. You know? 
so. Uh, it's I the can, first I, time I'm hearing about this particular part of it. Oh, well. The purging part of it. <laughs> well, remember I told you, my dad was a fisherman, right? So right. I grew up eating the best of fishes. Goopers, snappers, um, beef chub. Um, my father, he, he was very selective and particular about the type of fish he bring home. Mm -hmm. So I hated the earthy flavor. If I could not have made the fish taste better than that, I would not be doing it. Right, right. So that's one thing. It's an expense, but at the end of the day, you have happy customers who return. Right, And that's right. what we want. Oh, so you actually sell here? Yes, please. Okay, all right. So let's take a walk to the, um, the hydroponic part of it. And you can explain to us about the Water moving, so we have to get pipes to take the water, but it has to be and return it, you know. Yeah. So, trust me, we, we have a lot of pipes, and they, they, are, they are a lot more you cannot see than what you All see. Need, yeah. So, this yeah. is a bed we that lower side of the bed we've been doing some harvesting. We clean the channels, we look into root line. So, how many types of beds we have right now? Uh, we have about three varieties. So, I mean, uh, customers like that because they get a nice blend when you make a salad. So, mm -hmm. you know, they all have different textures and yeah. oh, some people tell lettuce do not have, doesn't really have a taste, but it does. Mm -hmm. Right, so you get different flavors coming through as well as texture, you know, and in this system, we, we can get our lettuce to be really crunchy, like the ones you would import. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people used to tell me when I started the first, you know, they say, challenge I'm having with local lettuce is that it's not crunchy and I tell them you need to try mine and then you know they try it and they're like wow I'm so, I'm so amazed I can't eat it. You're doing something right. Well it's, it's the method really it helps but at the same time you have to have the method right so yeah. <laughs> yes but what it is once we would have fed the fishes remember it's aquaponics mm -hmm. and we you know some people think that aquaponics is nasty because you're growing lettuce in fish poop but that's not the case right um, what is I, I would tell you but what it is once we feed the fishes the fishes pass their waste uh, fish waste basically is nitrogen and ammonia and in that state it's toxic for the fish to live in because you have the fishes swimming in their own swimming in their own waste mm -hmm. and then we have the water remember to it's a recirculating system it keeps circulating so the water keeps running into the fish tank and then it drains back first into a mechanical field. Once it goes into the mechanical filter, that takes the, the solid waste out of Extracts the water. Extracts it. Mm -hmm. Right? So there's no stool in the water. But then there's also the dissolved waste. So we have what you call a biological filter that takes care of the dissolved waste in the water. Because remember, it's nitrogen mm -hmm. and it's and ammonia. ammonia. Yeah. Right? So in the biological filter, what we do, uh, there is a bacteria that is attracted to the fish waste. We do not put it into the system. It comes naturally. That's how God designed it because this is exactly how it works in the wild. So it's really a, a natural ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And we create a habitat in the system which we call our biological filter. So once the bacteria comes into the system, it goes there because it likes to stick onto the surface. So we create a, 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 a lot of surface space in that filter so that we can stop the bacteria there in a very high density. Right. Once the water passes through the mechanical filter and the solid waste um, is, is extracted, mm -hmm. it goes into the biological filter and there the bacteria that's there, the two bacteria, they, they work on the nitrogen and the ammonia and they change the state of the, of the um, nitrogen and ammonia and they make it first into ammonium nitrite, mm -hmm. which is still toxic, and then into ammonium nitrate. From the biological filter, it comes here. Nitrate is what we need. For the plant growth, yeah. Right, and so the plants extract the ammonium nitrate from the water, and so the water becomes pure again. And then from here, it goes back to a tank that we pump back to the fish tank. Yeah. Right, so I mean, we, we, we try to, this is one where we try to cut costs and um, operation in one direction and gravity back everywhere. So there's one pump that, that handles this part of the operation, and but because we have the NFPs at the top, it's another pump that we have. 
it will work over there because explain this this type of um, hydroponics is called what? Okay, this is a deep, deep water raft deep water. system. Right. Um, okay. What it is, we use foam wood and we, we suspend. They're suspended in the water, okay. and the plants will simply just root from. Them. Uh, can can I have you pause for a minute? If you don't want to be in, in it, you can't be in front okay, of it. You can't have been it, no. Okay. Okay, I'm just trying to pick one up so you can see. That, that's what it looks like underneath. Right, so it's about 12 inches of water, and then the, the board is just floating, and the plants go into the water. You see, if you notice, there are bubbles coming up. 